Well, hello friends again, welcome back to class. Welcome back to this opportunity to study uh, these 12 apostles, these remarkable men. Uh, up to this point, we have been talking about uh, 11 of the apostles that we can imitate, that they bring quality characteristics uh, as we study them, we can learn from them. Uh, in this particular lesson, sadly, uh, although we have focused on 11 men worthy of imitation in this lesson, uh, we're gonna see one that had every opportunity to enjoy the riches of eternity, but he wasted that opportunity. And of course, we're talking about Judas Iscariot. Judas wasn't the first to do so, nor the last to do so in terms of, of squandering the opportunity, uh, turning his back on the opportunity. Uh, but I think in so many ways, uh, Judas is probably the most tragic of all the examples that we could come up with. Judas Iscariot is certainly remembered for one thing, and that's the betrayal of Christ. Uh, he was one of the original 12 apostles. Uh, he was chosen by Jesus. He was given every opportunity every lesson just as had the others. Uh, yet he chose to put himself ahead of Jesus. And as a result, Judas is lost for eternity. One author put it away. He said, Judas was a man who had given his life to Christ, but not his heart. And so I think that's what we see there. Judas followed Christ, spent the time with Christ along with the other disciples. And, and yet never truly gave his heart to the Lord. Well, as we've done so in the previous lessons, we'll do the same in this particular lesson. We're going to look at what we know about Judas from Scripture, and we're going to talk about the lessons we learned. There truly is a lot of information out there in the secular world, the non-biblical world about Judas. Uh, much of it is simply speculation. Uh, there's, there's a lot of questions about why Judas did what he did. Was Judas in control of his life, which I think he was? But, uh, you know, why did he do what he did? Uh, how, how did Lord, the Lord choose him knowing that Judas would betray him? All of these kinds of questions to which uh, there's no true response. And, and so we look at Scripture. We see what it was. We see the opportunities he had, the times that he could have changed could have chosen instead to be a faithful follower of Christ. So that's what we'll look at. And then we'll also talk about, okay, from this, what is it that we can learn? You know, in the world of education, we have what we call a non-example. When we teach, a lot of times we'll put out information and then we'll give an example. Well, in this case, we're learning about Judas, but he's a non-example of faithfulness, non-example of what it means to be a true servant to the Lord. And sadly, uh, we, we learn from non-examples as well. Well, let's begin, first of all, by talking about Judas. Let's, let's talk about his name a little bit and his background. Judas was a common name of the time. Uh, it, it means Jehovah leads. What, what a great name. Uh, name to carry, Jehovah leads. And uh, as we saw in our previous lesson with Judas, not Iscariot, uh, we see that, uh, that sadly the name Judas has, has come to mean a traitor because that's what Judas was. Uh, people are fond of naming their children after biblical characters. Uh, I'm named David uh, after King David. And, and yet, you don't hear people named Judas. You don't hear people named Herod. Some of those other names that are associated with villainy, associated with betrayal, those kinds of things. So, so Judas has come to be a, a name that is even today despised. So Judas was, was his name. Iscariot is uh, the region of uh, Kerioth, south of Judea an area where uh, Judas was from. <clears throat> Judas was not from Galilee. Uh, he was not related by family or profession uh, to any of the other apostles or, or to our Lord. And, and so some have speculated that that actually made it easier for Judas to betray our Lord. Again, that's speculation. I, I just don't know. Uh, scripture does not record how or when Judas was called. We don't know. 
Um, he may have been called directly by our Lord, as with the others. It's not recorded. He also may have been somebody that uh, heard of Jesus, listened to his teachings, was struck by the presence of Jesus, and, and chose to follow Jesus. Uh, we certainly know Jesus chose him to be an apostle. But Scripture doesn't record when or how he was called. Well, the writers of the gospel record him as a dishonest one, uh, someone who betrayed Christ. Whenever you see Judas's name in the listing of the apostles or spoken to about Judas, uh, you'll see him associated with the one who betrayed Christ in some, in some description of that. Mark records uh, that uh, he gives us the least amount about Judas. He states only that um, he was the one who handed Jesus over to the chief priest. That's in the book of Mark. Uh, Matthew gives some more details. He, so, he shows Judas as a dishonest man. Uh, Luke states that Satan entered into Judas. That doesn't necessarily mean Satan entered into Judas involuntarily. Uh, Judas's heart was receptive to him, sadly, and, and uh, allowed him in. Uh, John describes Judas as untrustworthy. Uh, Judas gives details about, uh, I'm sorry, John gives details about Judas in charge of their money and sometimes taking from it. So we not only see Judas as someone who betrayed Christ, but he actually betrayed the trust of all of them, stealing from their money. So when we put it all together, we, we really see a, a picture of a very sad individual, uh, someone who was physically part of the original 12. He had all the opportunities that they did. Uh, as yet, though, uh, he never gave his heart to the Lord. The seed of God's word, it, it not only, if you can use that expression, fell on hard soil, it fell on a hostile heart. Someone who was seeking only selfish gain. And, and you know, sadly, there's people out there in the world, uh, we introduce the gospel to them and they reject our Lord and are hostile to our Lord, and we have to understand that, and we have to move on. But we still try to plant that seed. There, there is an interesting uh, idea. People try to reconcile the choosing of Judas as an apostle and then the actual act of his betrayal. How are those actions uh, reconciled? Uh, I, I really don't see that there's a contradiction there. Scriptures show us that Judas made a conscious choice to betray Jesus. That's in Luke chapter 22, verse 48. You see, choice is a wonderful gift. It's a gift that God has given us. And in some ways, I like to think that that's one of the ways in which we are created in the image of God. God chose to create us. God chooses to forgive us. We choose to repent. We choose to be faithful. So choice is a wonderful gift that God has given us. And certainly God chose to offer his son. We choose to follow Christ. God chooses to love us. We choose to love God. So Judas made a conscious choice to betray Jesus. Luke twenty two forty eight. 48. Uh, as I said, John refers to him as a thief with greed in his heart as John portrays him. Uh, Jesus knew Judas's heart was set on evil and, and that he would not repent. Uh, John 6, verse 70 and John 17, 12. And yet Jesus continued to offer Judas opportunity to choose to repent, to choose not to betray him, even to the moment. And finally, Jesus recognizing that Judas would betray him said, go do what you need to do. So Judas's act of betrayal was truly part of God's sovereign plan. Uh, you can read the plan. I'll give you some scriptures related to that. Psalm chapter 41, verse 9, Zechariah 11, 12 and 13. So those were prophecies pointing toward uh, Judas's betrayal. Uh, Matthew 20, verse 18, Matthew 26, verses 20 through 25, and Acts chapter 1, 16 and 20. But here's the thing about that. God's plan, although it called that someone would betray Jesus, did not specify Judas. Judas is not foretold as the one who would betray Jesus, only that there would be one who would betray. It was one who was close to Jesus. 
And, and so that's what we see there. Judas did what he did because of the evil that was in his heart. He was focused on self. He had not given his heart to the Lord. And so sadly, Judas represents too many, too many who are under the continued influence of Satan and not the love of our Lord. Again, Judas had the choice and he chose poorly. Now, there's also uh, the idea of Judas's death some point to the uh, account in Matthew, the account in Acts, uh, and say, well, there's some conflicts there. Uh, I don't think so. Uh, what we see in Judas's death after the arrest of Jesus, Judas realized his guilt, his betrayal. Uh, in Matthew 27, verses three and four, says that Judas became remorseful and sought to return the money, which by the way was prophesied that he would take the 30 pieces of silver that was also prophesied and, and cast it into the temple. Those are, those are different prophecies that are out there. But the remorse was from his realization of his guilt. There's a difference between remorse and repentance. Yes, he was sorry for what he had done, but he didn't turn to the Lord. Instead, he turned to the chief priest. The chief priest however, could not give him or would not give him forgiveness and did not give him hope. So Judas went out and he took his life. There's, there's a point of note here though. Always remember, keep it in your mind. Judas was in control of his life. How he lived, how it ended was Judas's choice. Again, a poor choice. But remorse is not the same as repentance. He was sorry for what he had done, but he did not turn to the Lord. Those Jewish leaders, uh, not only were they unwilling, they, I mean, they couldn't, they were also unwilling. Um, and as I said, Matthew records, he threw the money down, he went out and hanged himself. Now, in Acts chapter 1, verses 18 and 19, uh, it gives us some more detail into the account of the ultimate end of Judas. Judas falls into the field and he bursts open and his bowels spilled out. There's no contradiction there. Matthew records the way in which he died and then Acts records what happened to the body of Judas. So he hung himself on a tree and then decaying and that sort of thing, uh, Judas fell into the field and uh, burst open. It's a tragic end, an unnecessary tragic end. Uh, Judas had been given all of the opportunities as the other apostles. Imagine being in the presence of Jesus and, and experiencing the love that the Lord gave to them, the teachings that he gave to them. You know, God gave Judas spiritual gifts, allowed him like the others to cast out demons and heal people and proclaim uh, through inspiration who Jesus was. So Judas knew who Jesus was. He knew the power that Jesus had, but he turned to self. He did not turn to the Lord. So what I'd like to do now, uh, I, I'd like to take a look as we've done with the others about um, some lessons that we learned from Judas. And remember, again, Judas is a non-example. There, there's some things that we don't want to be like, and that's certainly like Judas. Judas shows us that God has a plan, and that, that plan cannot be overcome. Even before God created man, and, and forgive me, uh, the, the way my mind works, I, I have trouble... Uh, conceiving the image that God had this plan even before creation, uh, knowing that we would reject God, we would sin, and yet even before creation put into motion our plan, that, uh, the pl His plan, that we would be able to come back to Him, to be reconciled to Him. So even before God created man, He put into place a plan that would redeem us from our sin. He begins, God begins to reveal that plan in Genesis chapter 3 after man had sinned in the garden. Specifically, it's, it's starting to reveal in math, or excuse me, uh, Genesis 3, verses 14 and 15. Uh, this is where uh, Satan has, has uh, caused Adam and Eve to sin and God is passing this judgment on him and, and pronounces the curse upon the serpent. Uh, that one day you'll bruise his heel, but he will bruise your head. So we have an indication there, the start of that plan, that there would be that sacrifice and that ultimately our Lord Jesus would prevail as he did. And that plan came to the climax when Christ arose from the dead. 
at the betrayal and at the crucifixion, uh, darkest of days, darkest of days. It seemed to all that it, it was over, that Satan had won. Certainly those who were part of that process thought they had won. But it was God's plan for a pure sacrifice to endure the ugliest of sins on our behalf. And included in that ugliest of sins was the betrayal that he had to endure. But in the darkest of days, there was the glimmer of sunlight. Three days later, Jesus proved the glory of God's plan when he conquered death and he arose. Conquered death and conquered sin. It's tragic that Judas had a role in that, that plan, but the point is Judas chose. He allowed himself, even seeking the opportunity for his role, but God graces us with the ability to choose, either to choose His way that leads to life or to reject Him that leads to death. But God's plan was for man's salvation through Jesus Christ. And sadly, Judas played a role in that. He did not have to play that role. He chose that role. But even though he did all the actions he did with Satan uh, leading the way, God's plan would not be thwarted. The second plan, or the second point, uh, Judas, of course, is a tragic example of lost opportunity. He was with Jesus, as I've said, all through his ministry, could have asked our Lord for anything. Uh, Judas received the powers. We read about that in Matthew 10, uh, God granting the powers of the apostles, and Judas was there. He was part of the apostles, fully part of the apostles. It wasn't 11 and, oh yeah, Judas too. There were 12 of them. Jesus designated 12. Judas was part of that, but he chose not to be the servant Jesus wanted him to be. Judas failed to learn the lessons that Jesus taught, the lessons that Jesus offered. He, he rejected our Lord. Judas saw miracles. Judas was a part of it, even teaching about Jesus. And, and we sit here today and we say, how could that be? How, how could somebody reject our Lord knowing all of that? Be Careful, because we too reject the Lord at times when we sin, especially if we'd sin deliberately, knowing better. We're, we're, we're truly no better than Judas, but there's one thing we have that Judas no longer has. We can turn to the Lord and find forgiveness. So Judas is a tragic example of lost opportunity. Uh, in, in the same way, we have every opportunity to accept our Lord on His terms and receive the blessings that He offers. So many go through life rejecting Jesus and in the same way, they're spiritually betraying our Lord. Uh, rather than repeat the sad ending of Judas, uh, taking our own life in that spiritual sense, we submit to Jesus. We gain life again. The choice is ours. Judas had the choice. And you know, Judas causes us to look at our own life uh, we, we, we can answer some questions about our own life. Are we a true disciple of Jesus or are we in it for ourselves? Jesus, Judas declared himself to be a disciple of the Lord, was referred to as a disciple of the Lord. To all of those around him, everything seemed fine. They didn't realize Judas was going to be the one uh, that would betray our Lord. When, when we fail, do we give up or do we accept the Lord's forgiveness and, and seek restoration? If Judas had turned to our Lord, he would have gained forgiveness. I believe that every fiber of my being. I, I know that would have happened. Our Lord promises it. Peter received forgiveness after denying Christ. You know, denying Christ is a form of betrayal. All of the apostles, uh, except Judas, uh, that, that these apostles fled came back to the Lord and the Lord, like Peter, we, we have the account of that, but the Lord reinstated these guys. You look at the thief on the cross. Uh, when you read Matthew's account and Luke's account, you see early on that even the thief who gained forgiveness, that thief, it says th th that they both were reviling our Lord. 
But the, the thief on the cross, after first mocking our Lord, uh, then defends our Lord and, and asks the Lord uh, to allow him to be with him in paradise, demonstrating that faith even in those final moments. And our Lord, not only does he say something, he does what he says and he forgave him. So the thief on the cross gained forgiveness. Uh, one of the greatest examples is Paul. After approving the stoning of Stephen, after seeking to persecute Christians, Paul was forgiven and more than forgiven. He was put into work for the Lord's service. So I truly believe, I know that had, Paul, had Judas sought forgiveness from the Lord, Judas would have been accepted by the Lord. And what, what a wonderful story that would have been. Imagine Judas, having gained forgiveness from the Lord, could stand there and say, I'm the guy that betrayed Judas. I'm the guy that facilitated all of his torture and death, and he even forgave me. Well, friends, I'm going to tell you, no matter our sin, no matter what we have done, who we are, when we turn to the Lord, we offer repentance to the Lord. He gives it to us. What a joy it is to be a child of God. Never be afraid to come home. The Father waits for us. You know, sadly, there's no song in our songbooks, in our assembly. There is no song that we sing that Judas would sing. He can no longer praise the Lord. He can no longer express his love. Uh, he, he cannot ask for forgiveness. It's too late. He squandered the opportunity. He chose poorly. Uh, I, I purposefully titled this lesson, Judas Iscariot, A Life Wasted. Because Judas had control of his life, he chose to waste it rather than allow God to redeem it. Judas is an example for us, but not for imitation. He's an example of one who traded the riches of eternity for that fleeting moment of false gain. That's what Satan does. He paints a picture out there and entices us to go towards it. And it's a lie. It's fool's gold is what it is. Judas heard Jesus when he said, lay up treasures in heaven. But he ignored this, seeking only his own personal greed and ambition. So today we also hear Jesus. We see both sides of the story and we must not choose unwisely as Judas did. We need to choose to follow Jesus. And when we have strayed from the path, we choose to return because we know the Savior will forgive. Never be afraid to come home. Well, this concludes our lesson on the original 12 apostles. We've gone through all of them. We've looked a little at the, the uh, biblical information each of these men uh, have recorded on them. And, and, and we've looked at what we can learn from them, uh, learning how to imitate them. And sadly, in the case of Judas, and what not to be. And there's one more lesson, though, that I'd like to offer uh, in our next lesson. We have one more, and it's looking into the future. We're, we're going to look at uh, Matthias and Paul and transition into the future. Uh, we'll, talk, we'll take a look at uh, their selection and, again, what we can learn from them. Friends, I, I so appreciate you. Uh, you've given me your time, which is such a precious gift, a gift that once you give that time, you can't get it back. You have chosen to study about our Lord, and thank you for that. It is such an encouragement to me, and, and it, it, I, I hope in some small way I've, I've helped encourage you to faithfulness. But please, it's not about me. It's not about you. It's about the Master, and it is to God that we give glory. Thank you very much for your time.